All right, next up is the tail of Locker 22. We got Kristen again. She's hogging the spotlight here. She's done three of the last four stories in a row. Um, she is the hot one. So at the time, I'm sure we were all like, yeah, I want Kristen to tell the other story. And yet again, she comes dressed as, um, as something, as a character. And so she comes and she's dressed as a hippie. She brings a bunch of hippie attire and the kids try their damnedest to come up with hippie references. <laughs> like, far out. And whatever the hell else they say in this. Um, so, yeah. Uh, another one that is pretty silly. Uh, it was okay. Not great. Uh, I remember it, but not something I really had any interest in remembering. So there's this new girl who's from France? The Ukraine? She hanging out with Tommy Wiseau? I, I don't know where this girl's accent is supposed to be from. I'm guessing this girl is actually, you know, from America or Canada and was trying to do some kind of foreign accent. So she came up with uh, anything she could. Kind of almost reminds me of uh, Diane Franklin's in Better Off Dead. Um, but Diane Franklin is a goddess and I don't care what she did. She could have freaking done the dumbest thing ever and I would have been like, you're perfect. <laughs> but anyway, I don't know what that accent's supposed to be. Maybe they said it at the beginning, like she's from, she's a foreign, or she's an ex foreign exchange student, or she's just came in from wherever. I didn't hear it. My kids and I were watching this together, and they interrupt me a little bit here and there. So there's there's stuff I definitely miss. So if I ever am like unsure of certain things, I'm blaming it on them. Okay, it's always the kids' fault. It's not mine, right? Because I'm a genius who never makes a mistake. Yeah, right. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, so she puts on a necklace. She has this like this school that she goes to. Obviously, has lost it. it. Lost it? Oh my God! I think I went to this school. Especially from what I'm about to say, they lost all their funding. Lost it? I don't know what the hell just happened there. Which is actually kind of funny because you know we just went through this teacher strike in Arizona. I, I don't know how much you guys had it all around the world here, but. Um, over in Arizona, for sure. We had a huge strike here that lasted for a while. Kids' schools were shut down for like weeks and they finally got like a 9% net increase with like a 20% and it doesn't matter. But it's just funny that I'm talking about this because this school is run down. Like she's going to her locker and it's buried behind like trash and, and like a bunch of like loose items that have just been like haphazardly thrown everywhere. Like it looks like a pin or like a, like a ping pong table with like all sorts of like random crap just, and it's not like good stuff. It's like beat up. This is, this is stuff that needs to be taken out to the trash and never has been. Um, and she, her locker is like, she's the only one back there. And it's so weird. Um, I think they just found an abandoned school to film in because they didn't have a big budget. So they were like, uh, do you want to clean this stuff up? No, we'll just say it's like an inner city school. <laughs> like High School High with uh, John Lovitz. Oh man, I love that movie. Anyway, so she uh, finds out that she, uh, she finds a necklace. She throws it on. She goes back into 1968 and she becomes this girl candy something. And uh, she's trying to figure out why she's going back. And she finds out that uh, she died in 1968 from an explosion at the school because her principal, who seems to have some serious anger issues, and I'm not sure how he's still the assistant principal. I think he's just the assistant principal. But my God, this guy is freaking like uh, Arlie Emery in, in uh, Full Metal Jacket or something. This guy is out of control. Um, but anyway... He, uh, yeah, I guess he screwed up. Maybe this is why he's angry, because he killed one of his students um, from a faulty gas freaking, uh, cord there. And, um, you know, she goes back in time and she saves uh, her. So then at the end, we find out that Candy actually lived and now she is the assistant principal. And uh, they changed time they they change like butterfly effect and i don't think that they truly can come like in this show they're not even going to try to attempt like the fact that how many things would have changed like those two people may have probably more than likely never been born and even if they were they probably wouldn't be going to that school everything would be so different one life changed even in the slightest is such a big ripple effect through time so 
they don't care about that kind of stuff in this show. But yeah, they save her and nothing has changed except for she's the assistant principal. Even the bullies that were bullying her earlier are still in trouble from what they did to her earlier in the show. But it's just Candy is now the principal and not the other guy. Whatever happened to him, I don't know, maybe killed himself. Hopefully. All right.